I have my uh, FM and TV antenna up on my roof. And um, we're going to take a look at what the signals look like coming off of this unit. I'm in the uh, Bay Area, about 40 miles from most of the stations up in San Francisco. I've set up my spectrum analyzer to uh, convert to uh, 75 ohms using a 50 to 75 ohms uh, converter here. It's just a uh, minimum loss pad that's available from many circuits. Then uh, go through the various adapters. They also have an FM broadcast uh, filter here. I'll show you the before and after. This is a Radio Shack filter I bought oh, quite, quite some time ago. And I've tested it and I'll show you the results of those tests. And uh, as you see we have uh, signals from uh, about 1 megahertz to about, uh, let's see, I think I'm going up to 1,000 megahertz here. I took it off of uh, the frozen uh, screenshot that I had there. So you can see it sweeping through here. And uh, these are all the peaks. TV up in the upper part of the spectrum here in the FM broadcast, attenuated down in the lower section. So from about uh, maybe here up, there's no attenuation, but from here to here, 88 to 108, I do have um, some attenuation. As you can see, we overload this thing uh, with the preamp on. Obviously, I don't have that problem when I uh, put the bandpass filter back in or a band reject filter back in uh, because all of that uh, all those signals stay well below the overload level so that's why I use the FM trap if I'm hooked up to a TV antenna or even for that matter to an amateur radio antenna it's a good idea it doesn't impact the uh, uh, performance in the uh, amateur radio frequency spectrum very much We're going to start from scratch uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that it comes up in a good situation in terms of attenuators and so forth. I'm covering from uh, 0 to uh, 1500 megahertz, 750 uh, megahertz in the middle here. And uh, I'm not seeing any signals that are uh, out of the ordinary here. Nothing that is going to cause overload, so I uh, feel safe in getting rid of uh, as much attenuation as I feel like I want to. So I'm going to set this to uh, manual and zero. All right. So there I am at uh, zero dBm, and I see all these signals. Still nothing that uh, leaps out at me as overloading the analyzer, so I think we're safe. Uh, FM broadcast is down here, and that's what I was concerned about, but on the preamp that uh, I use in the splitter to drive this uh, TV port, um, I uh, have a filter that filters out the FM broadcast band. It's about 30 to 40 dB of uh, attenuation across that band, which gets everything down into a reasonable level. Now, where we want to be is the uh, TV frequencies, which these days with uh, digital TV. It uh, starts at channel 14. Well, actually, there's some uh, some down in the VHF. We're going to ignore those for the moment, but let's go from channel 14 to 51, which is 470 to uh, 698. Uh, you know, let's call it 700. So we'll uh, go to frequency here and start frequency 470 megahertz. Stop frequency 600 megahertz, excuse me, 700 seven megahertz. Okay, we do see some uh, signals there. Um, another thing I can do here, however, is I can go to amplitude 
and to the second screen here and turn on the preamp. Aha, so there we go. So we have zero dB of attenuation and we have the preamp turned on and there's nothing overloading it uh, as we could see earlier. Uh, and here's the frequencies of all the TV channels in that area or in this area that come off of my uh, TV antenna on the roof about 20 feet off the ground. Um, and we see down to minus 90 dBm, which is uh, pretty sensitive. All right, now, the other thing is, let's put this in a normal, uh, no more normal situation for TV measurements. Uh, I'll go back to amplitude here, and I'll go back to units, and I'll go to dBmV. Okay, now I have 17 dBmV at the top here, but uh, let's make it 15 just for convenience sake here. So I'll uh, I'll go to the scale, uh, no, excuse me, the um, input at 10 uh, reference level, and I'll go 15 dBmV. So now I have 15 dBmV here. And... Um, the other, uh, right now I've got the thing set up for 5 dB per, well, let's see, I've got it for 10 dB per division. Uh, but we can go to, let's uh, make it um, scale 5 dB per division. Oops, sorry about that. All right, now our noise level is well off the screen, uh, but at 35 dB below 0 dBmV, which is right here, um, we probably aren't going to be picking up signals too well anyway. But I'd like to see the noise down there. So I guess I'll set this, uh, instead of 15, I'll make this 10, because nothing's above the line here anyway. So uh, we'll go back to amplitude here, or uh, reference, and we'll make that 10 dBmV. Well, still not uh, quite there. Let's make it 5. Well, wait a second. I have one other thing I need to do here, and the other thing I need to do is uh, calibrate out uh, what uh, this pad is doing to us. This, uh, this is a minimum loss pad, 50 ohms in and 75 out, or vice versa, as it, depending on which way you put it. So I'm taking in 75 ohms here with the F fitting and so forth, going through the 75 ohm input. It's 50, converted to 50 ohms to the uh, Regal. And I'm using a BMP5075, uh, BMP-5075 uh, plus, uh, which is from many circuits. So that uh, to compensate for that, that we can go uh, again on amplitude here and go to 75 ohms. Notice we went up by about 6 dB. So. Now we uh, are calibrated, and it brings the noise level up here. So that uh, makes me happier that I'm seeing everything that there is to see there. But I've also uh, compensated, so let's make this 10 again. So we'll go back to reference level in 10 dBmV. Okay. So now we uh, see all of these signals for the San Francisco Bay Area off of my antenna here in San Jose, which is, I don't know, 30 or 40 miles from most of the transmit sites, although some of them are on Mount Allison, which is only about, oh, I don't know, seven or eight miles away. But these are the uh, signals. And as you see, most of them are up around 0 dBmV coming off of the preamp uh, that I've got, which splits it four ways. This is being uh, one of the coaxes. The other feed three other TVs in the house. Uh, so that's uh, that's what we're looking at here. So now we have everything, everything uh, calibrated uh, appropriately. We have this at uh, 10. We have the uh, thing set up for uh, 75 ohms. And uh, we see the noise off the noise floor here. I could get uh, better signal to noise, but it, it would be beyond what we'd be able to receive anyway. So I'm not going to change the thing from 1 megahertz to, say, 300 kilohertz. Uh, I think it's pointless at this point. And you notice that uh, some of these signals are at or above uh, 0 dBm uh, V. And uh, this, I'm saying, is 20 dB below that, which is probably the lower end of reliable signals. 
So we have some that are right at that level. We have some just below and some just above. And then we have these uh, probably outlying uh, signals that are uh, probably either from Sacramento or maybe the Monterey Bay area, something like that. And we have these two signals, which seem to be uh, something other than television. And I suspect that that's uh, uh, in the uh, 470, uh, the 480 region, which I think is uh, being used for public service type applications these days. So let's, uh, let's see what the top 10 are in this list. Uh, what we can do is we can hit a peak here. And uh, we can do uh, on screen two uh, here, a peak table and turn it on. And there's all the frequencies that we're uh, receiving. Uh, so I'm gonna stop that. Uh, let's see. So what I'll do is I'll hit trace and uh, I'll hit freeze at some point when I've got all 10 or 9. There we go. I got all 10. Hey, how's that? So there's our uh, frequencies and there's what levels they are. And uh, we're seeing things down to... Uh, well, let's see, what's the worst case here is minus 23.5 dBmV at 482. Uh, 484 is uh, minus 22.5. As I said, I think those are two-way radio uh, type signals. And number four, well, let's see, where's number three? Yeah, number four is um, 501.8. So that's that's a TV channel. In fact, we'll uh, tell you what these are. I dug around on the internet and found uh, various information about these stations. Channel 7 is still on Channel 7 and it's at minus 3 dBmV. Uh, channel 11 has been moved to 12 and it's at minus 3.5 dBmV. Those are all in uh, VHF. But KSPW doesn't come through on Channel 8 very well, at least right at this time. I see it occasionally. Channel 14 through 18 in UHF... Uh, uh, clearly it's in communications uh, uh, territory these days. And I think the first TV station is KOFY, which is on the local hill here, Mount Allison, 0 dBmV. KMAX, KRCB, and KQET. Uh, QET don't seem to come through, and they're at uh, fairly low levels here. KTSF comes through at 0 dBmV, uh, but... Uh, KFTL is minus 20, and it's uh, a little marginal. It's about three bars. KPIX and KQED are fine. Minus 30 for KSMS, which is also on Salinas at Fremont Peak, and um, it doesn't come through. Neither is KEMO or KMPT is fine. Uh, KFSF is fine. KCRA should uh, be visible, but isn't. My theory there is that uh, that's because it might have too much multipath coming over the hill from the uh, Central Valley. KICU is on Ma Monument Peak. It's a zero and it's fine. KRN, KCNS. And minus 33 uh, from San Francisco um, doesn't come through. So that seems to be outside of the capability of the receiver. Uh, and we're good on KKPX, KAXT, KCSM, KTVU, KBCW. Those are all okay. Uh, minus 21 on KAXT is local. Um, the hill's only eight miles away. KION and uh, Monterey, which is on Mount Toro, is not coming through at all. Minus 13 dBm out of KTLN, Novato is receivable here, uh, but it uh, is marginal. And that's probably, again, it's on Mount Burdell, which is uh, pretty far north and uh, probably has uh, multipath problems. Same level from KTVU off of Allison, which is, as I said, relatively local here, is uh, fine, and as are the uh, KSTS, KQEH, and KDTV uh, signals, which are all the strongest signals that are actually uh, uh, on the band. So this gives you an idea of what uh, uh, can, can be done.